Good morning, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. I am thankful to be here. Uh, it's awesome. Hashem is so great to us. Uh, thankful for another week that he has brought us through, uh, another Sabbath, uh, day of rest, just to relax, to focus on him throughout this day and to fellowship. Uh, he is just so good to us. We just want to lift him up on high, and there is no one beside him. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start this morning. If you don't know anything about me, I like Isaiah. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and start. We often uh, teach out of Isaiah and uh, one of my favorite chapters, Isaiah 45. So if you will let us stand, turn to Isaiah 45. There's something we want to get out of this this morning. Isaiah 45 and verse 15. And we'll read through this. Truly you are El who hides yourself, O Elohim of Israel, Savior. They shall be put to shame and even be humiliated. All of them, the makers of idols, shall go away together in humiliation. Israel shall be saved by Hashem with an everlasting deliverance. You are not to be ashamed nor hurt forever and ever. For thus said Hashem, creator of the Shamayim, he is Elohim, former of the earth and its maker. He established it. He did not create it to be empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Hashem and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have not said to the seed of Yaakov, seek me in vain. I am Hashem, speaking righteousness, declaring matters that are straight. Gather yourselves and come, draw near, you who have escaped from the nations. No knowledge have they who are lifting up the wood of their carved images and pray to a mighty one that does not save. Declare and bring near, let them take counsel together. Who has announced this from old? Who has declared it from that time? Is it not I, Hashem, and there is no mighty one besides me, a righteous El and a savior, there is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth. For I am El and there is none else. I have sworn by myself a word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return to me so that to me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. One shall say, only in Hashem do I have righteousness and strength and he comes to him and all those displeased with him shall be put to shame. In Hashem, all the seed of Israel shall be declared right and boast. So let's lift up our eyes. Hashem, Adonai, Elyon, Most High, there's none beside you. I'm so thankful for this day that you've given us. It is always an honor to uh, stand before a people, uh, even as the word goes out to a people that might not know you and understand you. It is just a great honor uh, to be here and to be able to teach your word. We are so thankful and humbly uh, we come before you. Thank you for this message that you've given us. May we be able to speak it plainly in a way that uh, we can understand, uh, those that are listening can understand, and we can apply it to our lives. May we make it practical. Um, and just easy to apply. We're so thankful for who you are, thankful for everybody here. Speak plainly for us, Hashem. We're just depending on you. You are our El, and we are your people. We just lift you up on high. No one is your equal. Baruch Hashem, hallelujah, amen. <clears throat> so, Isaiah 45 and 15, the very first verse is the verse that we want to get into. So truly you are El, who hides yourself, O Elohim of Israel, Savior. So we are definitely addressing Hashem here. Uh, he is the only Savior, and there is no one beside him. If you don't get anything out of Isaiah 45, just realize no one is his equal. No one is equal to him. He is only El, and there is none like him. He is the one who made all things. He made all things for himself. But also, when you see him creating the Shemaim and the Eretz, who did he create it for? We talked about that, I think, two weeks ago or last week. He created it for man. He created it for Yaakov. So uh, Israel, his people, he created it to be inhabited. He did not create it without purpose. So uh, he is Hashem. There is none beside him. So 15, truly you are El. So you are the mighty one, merciful, who hides yourself. So El is power, is what that is. You are El who hides yourself, O Elohim of Israel, Savior. So the hide is Sothar. It is to hide. You conceal yourself to be hidden. You hide by a covering. Now, when we compare what is written in 15 to verse 16, they shall be put to shame and even be humiliated. All of them, the makers of idols, shall go away together in humiliation. So he is hidden, idols are seen. So that's the comparison that we're making here. Um, if you see and how many times that it is testified in the scripture, he is not an idol. He is no one to be seen. Even when he was on Sinai, he concealed himself in the cloud. No one saw him, okay? So we're gonna be talking about today, how do you get to know him? How do you get to know who he is, okay? So he hides himself. He is not an idol. They will be put to shame. That is Kalam. 
Uh, it is to insult. They will be insulted. They will be humiliated, shamed, to be ashamed. They will be confused, the makers of idol. They will be dishonored, confounded. They will be taunted. They will blush like, why in the world did we bow down to wood, stone, idols? They will be ashamed. They will blush. They will be hurt. And when you continue to read through Isaiah 45, everyone's going to bow and the makers of idols that continue to worship their gods and follow that doctrine will be confounded. They will be ashamed. They're going to be angry. They're going to be angry. So the difference in the first two verses here, he is hidden. He has hidden himself. He is not an idol. Verse 17, Yisrael shall be saved by Hashem with an everlasting deliverance. You are not to be ashamed nor hurt forever and ever. I love that. Israel will be saved by Hashem. That is a testimony of who he is. That is who Hashem is. So in this world, we have many gods, we have many religions, we have many doctrines. Israel will be made right. So if you are wanting to be religious or you're wanting to follow a doctrine, in the end, all that's going to matter is Hashem. All that's going to matter is the creator, <laughs> the one who created all things. So yod heh vav -Hey, that's all that's going to matter in the end. There will be no other name. And Israel shall be saved. For thus said Hashem, creator of the Shemaim, he is Elohim, former of the earth and its maker. He established it. He did not create it to be emptied, that is void or vain, vanity. He created it with purpose. So he had purpose when he created the earth. He didn't create it without purpose. He formed it to be inhabited. That was his purpose. I am Hashem and there is none else. So he's saying, no one is my equal. No one helped me. It, it was me. I did it. Okay. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have not said to the seed of Yaakov, seek me in vain. So he made the earth with purpose and Yaakov has purpose. Okay. We have purpose in this life. Our purpose is to spread truth. Our purpose is for people to realize that Hashem is El and there is no El beside him. He is the only one. No one is his equal. So that's purpose. But I also like what the true purpose is, because if you look at Judaism, and I really like that aspect of it, it's not their duty to convert anybody. It's not their duty to proselyte. What they do and what they've always wanted to do is to instill morality into the world, okay? In the end, everybody's going to see Hashem. What they wanted to do was instill morality. They wanted truth. They wanted people to do righteousness. And that's what I have a longing for. So I teach righteousness. In the end, everybody's going to see Hashem. So that is the purpose. I am Hashem speaking righteousness, just like we said, seek, um, I have not said to the seed of Yaakov, seek me in vain. So Yaakov has purpose. I am Hashem speaking righteousness, declaring matters that are straight. So what's the purpose? Speak righteousness. Declare matters that are straight. Gather yourselves and come. Draw near together. You have, who have escaped from the nations, no knowledge have they who are lifting up the wood of their carved image and pray to a mighty one that does not save. They don't have knowledge. Can they not see? Do they not perceive? Declare and bring near. Let them even take counsel together. So all the makers of idol, take, uh, my idols, make and take counsel together. Who has announced this from old? Who has declared it from that time? Is it not I, Hashem, and there is no mighty one besides me, a righteous El and a Savior? There is none beside me. My favorite part, or one of the favorite parts about Isaiah 45 is he makes a charge. He gives an invitation to the world to the makers of idols. He says, come and follow me. Your idol cannot save. There is no idol. There is no other God. And as we continue on and we look through Egypt, there is no other God who can save you from the hand of Hashem. Okay? You can pray to them and they will not deliver. You look at that and you see that in Elijah and the prophets of Baal. You can pray and you can pray and you can pray and there is no God who can save you from the hand of Hashem. So take counsel together. And then he gives them an invitation. Verse 22, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. So what is that an invitation to? Turn away from your idols, turn to me. 
Turn away from your idols. If you get anything out of Isaiah 45, Hashem is hidden. You serve him in a certain purpose, in a certain way. It's through his Torah. And we'll see his presence in our life as we continue to do this. But you turn from your idols and turn to Hashem. If you cling to your idols, you're going to be confused. I had a really good, um, a really good compliment this week. The person was talking to me and they said, I listen to what you have to say. And you make it to where it's easy to understand. Make it practical. Um, it was Albert Einstein, I believe, that said, if you cannot easily explain something, you do not understand it well enough. It should not be confusing. It should be easy to understand, and that's my prayer often, easy to understand and able to apply. We need to be able to apply this in our lives. So, continuing on. Come, turn to me and be saved. That is a roundabout way or an indirect way of saying, turn away from your idols. Turn to me and be saved, you ends of the earth, for I am El and there is none else. Turn from your idols and turn unto Hashem. I have sworn by myself, a word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return so that to me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. What will they swear? You are Hashem. Those were idols. That's what they're going to swear. They're going to make an oath to him that he is God. And only Torah is the instruction. No other instruction. Verse 24, one shall say, only in Hashem do I have righteousness and strength. He comes to him and all those displeased with him shall be put to shame. So they will be confused, those who are angry with Hashem when their idols fail. Verse 25, we wanted to get here too. In Hashem, all the seed of Israel shall be declared right and shall boast. That right is Zadok. It is, they will be just, they will be righteous. They will be in the right, they will be justified. So like we said before, you have many religions, you have many doctrines in the world, but in the end, the only truth that is going to stand is Hashem is God, he is El, he is Savior, there is none beside him, no one like him. He is not an idol, he made all things for himself, he made it with purpose, that's gonna stand. And every single person is going to bow and swear that. So in the end, Israel is going to be declared right. Because many people ask that question, what religion should I follow? What should I do? What doctrine should I listen to? In the end, the only thing that's going to stand is Hashem and his Torah. So who is Hashem if he is hidden? Who is he? How do we get to know him? Exodus 9. Exodus 9, we'll get in verse 8. I think this was the Torah portion last week. So Exodus 9 and verse 8. And Hashem said to Moshe and to Aharon, fill your hands with ashes from a furnace and let Moshe scatter it toward the Shemaim before the eyes of Pharaoh. And it shall become fine dust in all the land of Mitzrayim, and it shall cause boils to break out in sores on man and beast in all the land of Mitzrayim. And they took ashes from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moshe, scattered them toward the Shemaim, and they caused boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians were unable to stand before Moshe because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians and on all the Mitzrites. So they were on everybody, Okay. And Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as Hashem had said to Moshe. Now, this can be a very confusing point, okay? If man has free will, and man can make his own decisions, why did Hashem harden the heart of Pharaoh, okay? So, did Hashem harden Pharaoh's heart? This was Pharaoh's response to who Hashem was, that is how we teach that. This was Pharaoh's response to who Hashem was. Some people hate you for no reason. It has nothing to do with you, but their perception of you as a person, okay? You are you, whether people believe in you, accept you, like you, or dislike you. You're still you. Now, on that, you should not be a people pleaser. And what that means is don't cater yourself 
in order to keep people in your life. Okay, that's a people pleaser. You will lose yourself. You will lose your own identity in order to keep people in your life. Don't do that. You are going to be the person that's wore out more than anybody. If you continue to be a people pleaser, you have to know how to set boundaries. You have to know how to say no. It's okay to take care of yourself. Okay? So, you are you. Be you. Be the best you <laughs> that you can be. So, no matter what people believe in, accept, like or dislike about you, you're yourself. So what is this? Hashem was El and Pharaoh hated it. Why? Because he wanted to be God. He wanted to be Savior. And we'll get that even more. And there's a verse that we're going to use that's been twisted and thrown out of context that's in the uh, New Testament. And it talks about, I have raised you up for this reason. That is completely out of context. And we'll get into the script and tell you what it really means. Okay, because it almost sounds the way that it's written in New Testament. I have made you particularly for this purpose so I can destroy you. <laughs> and I can show everybody my might. But that is not what it's talking about when you read it in context. So, this was Pharaoh's response to who Hashem was. His heart was hardened towards him. Why? Because it was God against God. And we've done that message before. The Pharaoh believed that, or the people of Egypt believed that Pharaoh was a manifestation of God. That's no different than Christianity. I'm telling you that stuff has been passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. And that's why the whole nations or all the nations, the Gentiles led by Paul, accepted all of that because it was something that they were already familiar with. Okay? They were already familiar with that. That's why they accepted it and loved it. God made man. Okay? A man made God, or God is man. All that stuff has been taught before. So that's why we make the comparison between who is God. He is hidden. Hashem is hidden. He is not an idol. He never took the form of a man. He never was a man. Okay? I am not a man. That's what he said himself. So, this was Pharaoh's response to who he was. His heart was hardened towards him because he wanted to be God. I want to be Savior. And we'll get into that more. He did not listen to him. Verse 13, and Moshe and Hashem said to Moshe, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus said Hashem, Elohim of the Hebrews, Ibrahim, let my people go so that they serve me. For at this time, I am sending all my plagues onto your heart and on your servants and on your people so that you know that there is no one like me in all the earth. So who was in the earth? Pharaoh was in the earth. And this backs up what we're talking about. I want you to know, Pharaoh, that there is no one like me in the earth. You are not my equal, buddy, is what he is telling him. I want you to know that you can't stop me. None of your gods can stop me. You have no power to stop me. And you know what that did to Pharaoh? It made his heart hard. You don't tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh of Egypt. Make sense? Makes sense. So, I am teaching you this so you know that there is no one like me in all the earth. Verse 14. Now, if you had stretched out my hand and struck, uh, verse 15, now if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. And this is very important to understand when we get into the next verse. I could have destroyed you, Pharaoh, for not listening to me. And I had mercy on you. I could have destroyed you. So, I'm going to find out Exodus, and then we go to verse 16. For this reason, here we are. Uh, now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people, verse 15, with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. And for this reason, if you read it, what it said right here, for this reason I have raised you up in order to show you my power and in order to declare my name in all the earth. So there are a few points we want to hit in this. That is a bad translation. There are many other translations, and it says... And for this reason, I have let you live, is what that means. I have let you live so I can show my power 
and my might. And that makes so much more sense when you continue through that. And he says that my name shall be declared in the earth and you still exalt yourself. I believe that's how that's supposed to be interpreted. Because that makes sense. In the BBE, it says, I have kept you from destruction. In the Easy English, it says, I have let you live. In the EBR, it says, I have let you remain. I have let you remain. I have had mercy on you. I could have thrown pestilence on you and it would have destroyed you and your people. But I want you to know and I want everyone to know and I want this to be a testimony of who I am. And what is my name? If we had a title for this message, we know him by his name, okay? If you can't see him, then how do you know him? And there are three points in the way that you know him. You know him by his presence in your life. You know him by his provision in your life. And you know him by his protection in your life, okay? How many times have you heard somebody say, well, that was a miracle. Well, who in the world saved you? Who in the world protected you? I knew somebody was watching out for me. Who was it? That is him. That is him. That is his presence in your life, provision in your life, and protection in your life. So, how do we make sense of what's going on here? Hashem was Hashem. Pharaoh hated it because all his power was being stripped from him. I have let you live in order to show my power that there is no mighty one besides me, just like it says in verse 14, so that you know there is no one like me in all the earth. I love it. Oh, it's so good. That's yummy. <laughs> That's yummy. So what does he say? I have let you live to know and to show my power and in order to declare my name in all the earth. Verse 17, it makes sense with how we are bringing this out in context because it says you still exalt yourself. That is pride. You have hardened yourself against me not to let my people go because you think that you're something, Pharaoh, against my people in that you do not let them go. This is a response this is God versus God. Pharaoh was the God of Egypt. Pharaoh wanted to be God with no one beside him. He wanted that honor. By the end, the Egyptians knew who was God. Excessive pride can take you over. If you are too proud, like I said, there's a balance in life. Don't be too humble. People walk all over you. Don't be too proud because Hashem will humble you. Okay? So there's a balance in life. You can be proud of the work that you do and the effort that you put in. Um, so you can do that, but don't be, and you can be humble, but don't be too humble where you can't set boundaries and say no. So there's a balance in life. You got to know when to use what. So, but excessive pride can take you over and it can become your detriment. Arrogance is ignorance. Arrogance is ignorance. So, no one beside him. Exodus 14. We also wanted to get, and we'll, we'll go to Exodus 14, but there's a point that we want to get in verse 16 before we turn there. And for this reason, I have let you live in order to show you my power and in order to declare my name in all the earth. My name. That is, we know him by his name. That is protection, provision, presence. We know him by his name. What is name? It is Shem. We know him by his reputation, his memorial, his monument. We know him by his character and his authority. We know him by his renown and his report. My favorite is uh, character. We know him by who he is. We know him by what he does, protection, um, presence, and what's it? provision. So this is his authority. No one can stop him. So you know him by his name. And by the end of it, they knew who he was. So we're going to turn to Exodus 14 now. Exodus 14 and verse 8. 14 and verse 8. And Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh, sovereign of Israel, and he pursued the children of Israel, but the children of Israel went out with a mighty hand. So excessive pride could take you over. He was infuriated. What have I done? 
I let my slaves go. And if, <laughs> if they did ever go back, which you can see here that some of them wanted to, Egypt's destroyed now, okay? If they thought that <laughs> the building and the hard labor was tough before, they are going to have to rebuild Egypt. So it was going to be tough, and I can't believe that they wanted to go back. But that's life. That's how we are. And that's what we talked about last week, and we'll say it again when we get there. But uh, Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh. This was a response of Pharaoh to who Hashem was. Sovereign of Mitzrayim, and he pursued the children of Israel. But the children of Israel went out with a high hand, and the Mitzrites pursued them. And all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and they reached them camping by the sea uh, beside P. Haoroth, before Baal Sephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel uh, lifted their eyes and saw the Mitzrites coming upon them, and they were greatly afraid. So fear. So the children of Israel cried out to Hashem, and they said to Moshe, Did you take us away to die in the wilderness because there were no graves in Mitzrayim? What is this that you have done to us to bring us up out of Mitzrayim? Is it not the word that we spoke to you in Mitzrayim saying, leave us alone and let us serve the Mitzrites for it would have been better for us to serve the Mitzrites than to die in the wilderness. So what did we talk about last week? The benefits of change is what we talked about last week. Can you see the benefits? Okay. People are living miserable lives, but they are comfortable. What does that mean? afraid to step out of their comfort zone in order to face their fears. So they would rather stay and live in misery than face their fears and live a better life. They were afraid. They were afraid. So step out. Step out of your comfort zone. Continuing on. Lifted up their eyes. You should have just left this in... In Mitzrayim, you should have left us in Egypt. Verse 13, and Moshe, Moshe said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the deliverance of Hashem, which he does for you today. For the Mitzrites whom you see today, you are never, never to see again. Hashem fights for you and you keep silent. And Hashem said to Moshe, why do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel and let them go forward. And you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, see I, am hardening the hearts of the Mitzrites and they shall follow them. And I am to be esteemed through Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Mitzrites shall know that I am Hashem. When I am esteemed through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. So they are going to know when I, that esteemed, is prevail. They are going to know when I prevail who I am. How do we know him? We know him by his reputation. <laughs> Why do you think so many times in Torah it says, and teach this to your children? Teach this to your kids about Egypt and what I did and brought you out with a mighty hand. Have you ever heard, and that's one of my favorite portions, have you ever heard of anyone bringing a nation from another nation, nation with a strong and mighty arm and bringing you into another land or revealing himself to anyone else but to you? And I did this for you so that you know that I am El. And that's why he says, teach that to your children. Rehearse that to your children, that there are no other gods. The Mitzrites shall know, they will experience that I am Hashem when I prevail against them through Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. By the end, the Egyptians knew who he was. And even in the beginning, when you see Pharaoh and Pharaoh is first talking to Moses, what does Pharaoh say? Who is he? Who is Hashem that I should follow him? Is this a new God that I need to know about? Who is he? I've got, I've got all my other gods back. Wait, wait a second, I'm God. Who is he? By the end of it, he knew. And by the end <laughs> of everything, when it's all said and done, everybody's gonna know who he is. Everybody. So there is no mighty one who can save from Hashem, who is equal to him. Comfortable misery. Step out of your comfort zone in order to seek a better life. We know him by his name. That is his reputation, character, authority. He has presence in our life. He makes provision for us. And 
He is our protection. Exodus 34. Exodus 34 and verse one. And Hashem said to Moshe, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones and I shall write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. And be ready in the morning, then you shall come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And let no man come up with you and let no man be seen in all the mountain and let not even the flock or the herd feed in front of that mountain. And he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moshe rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as Hashem had commanded him. And he took two tablets of stone in his hand. And Hashem came down in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Hashem. The name. So we've talked about this many times. What has already happened? What's happened in the past? Uh, right before this is happening, um, he broke the two tablets of stone. Why? Because they made the golden calf. Broke the two tablets of stone because he made the golden calf. And now he's going back up to receive the tablets again. So what is his name? What is his name? Let's read through this and then we'll break it down. Uh, he passed by him. And we talked about also in verse 33, uh, Moses is talking to Hashem and he says, if I have found favor in your eyes and I've done what you have asked, pass before me. And this is Hashem passing before him. This is him proclaiming the name. So the name is Shem, reputation, his character, his authority. And Hashem passed before him and proclaimed, Hashem, Hashem, and El, compassionate and showing favor, patient and great in kindness and truth, watching over kindness for thousands, forgiving wickedness and transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the wickedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. If we know anything about the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, of them that hate me, to the third and fourth generation. So if you continue and you pick up where your father and your parents left off and you are continuing to take those idols and you continue to take those transgressions and you adopt them and make them your own, of course it's going to be punished to the third and fourth generation. But what is his name? What is his character? What is his reputation? He is Hashem, Hashem. Hashem first is merciful before we sin. That's the first one. The second one is merciful after we sin. This is Hashem. This is his name. This is his character. How do we know him? He is God. That means powerful. He is compassionate. He eases the punishment of the guilty and does not people, uh, does not put people into extreme temptation. He is gracious. Gracious to the undeserving. Slow to anger. That's with the righteous and wicked both. He gives sinners time to reflect improve and repent. Abundant in kindness, that is kind to those who lack merit, personal merit. He is truth. Hashem never regens on his word to reward those who serve him. So he's always firm on that. Preserver of kindness, virtues are passed down. When you collect that from your parents and you pass that down continually, he's kindness as preserver of kindness. Then you have 10, 11, and 12. That is three types of sin, iniquity, willful sin, and error. But if you read through all of these, he forgives if you repent, if you turn back. And how many times have we said, and we mentioned it this weekend also, how do I know he forgave me? You changed your life. You stopped doing it. You repented. That's how you know you're forgiven. And then he forgives if we repent and he cleanses the effects of sin when people repent. I do like to hit, he does not leave unpunished. Um, what that means is you feel it. You feel it. I believe that every sin that we do has an effect on this world, uh, has an effect on your environment. Don't just expect once you say, forgive me, that somebody's just right and raring to do that. Okay. So remember that everything you do has consequences. There is reward and there is also uh, bad consequences for doing things. So don't just think, you go to somebody, please forgive me. Okay, that they just automatically forgive you. There's hurt there, pain, okay? Don't expect that just to erase everything. He said he does not leave them unpunished. So you will feel the effects of the decisions you make in your life, period. And I think that everybody knows that. Everybody understands that. So 
get through that. Now we go to Isaiah 55. Ooh, this is good. This is my favorite part. It's good so far. <laughs> but now we're about to get in Isaiah 55. I think we went to Isaiah 55 maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Something we want to get out of this. You've heard this your whole life, but it's just so awesome. Isaiah 55 and 1. Oh, uh, oh everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no silver, come by eat. Uh, come by and eat. Come by with wine, uh, come by wine and milk without silver and without price. So we understand and we talked about how um, water does not really help you digest. Milk and wine helps digest. So he's talking, come, what is the water? His word. And that's what he says as we continue on. Come drink. If you're hungry, come eat from his Torah, from his, from his instruction. Verse two, why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? And that is the doctrines of today. That is um, any religion. Why are you continuing to put your time and your effort? That's what that work is. You are putting your attention, your time, and your effort into things that leave you unsatisfied. And that's why many people will leave, as we talked about before, the church. Why? Because they know there's lies in the church for one. And number two, they're going and they're only getting temporal satisfaction. Once they walk out of the door and everybody's been hooping and hollering, woo, that was good. But once they step out, it's gone. It has no lasting effect. Why do you continue to put your time, energy, attention into something that does not satisfy you? I dry out. And what does that mean? I don't spend enough time in the word like I should. And this week, I felt dried out. But you know what? When you put your time and your energy and attention back into Torah and back into Tanakh, he gives you life. Who is the man? Who is the tree? Psalms 1. It is you. You are the one that's planted by the rivers. Uh, Jeremiah, you are the one that will draw and never see the heat, never see the drought. But if you are not putting time and attention into Tanakh and into Torah, what are you going to do? You're going to dry up. You're going to wither. Because this is food for your spirit. This is food for your soul. I was asking myself the question this week, what does it look like to give up? Because many times you, help, you tell people if they're in a bad situation, well, just don't give up. What does giving up look like? You don't do the dishes anymore. You don't do the laundry anymore. You don't get out of the house. You uh, start taking up addiction. You give up on your family. That's what giving up looks like. So don't give up. It's even when you are having a bad day, you continue to live your life. Do not be sedentary. That is a pandemic, uh, an epidemic that is all through America, being sedentary, not moving. And you know how I am with exercise, but that's, that's destroying us. And I'm, I'm definitely the person who believes if you don't use it, you lose it. So use it. Use it. So, Isaiah 55. Come, why do you continue to put your time, your effort, and your attention into something that is not satisfying you? You leave and you're still dried up because they tell you about prosperity and you ain't got to worry about nothing covered by the blood. It's, it's a joke. It's so sad. It's a joke. And we might <laughs> do, the, <laughs> do a message next week on original sin. So what is original sin and what is the doctrine behind that? It's the fact that, and what they say, especially when it comes to uh, Christianity, in that doctrine that you're totally deprived, that you cannot do good. And what do they do? They give you the poison, they give you the curse, and they give you the cure. That's what the government does. They create the problem and then they give you the cure for it. So what does that mean? You have the ability, there is no original sin. You did not adopt a sinful nature from Adam. You have that ability, there is hope for you. Hashem wouldn't have said it in Deuteronomy 30 if it was impossible that you can do his Torah. So we'll probably talk about that next week. Continuing on, why? Listen, listen. 
Middle of verse two. To me and eat what is good and let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear. So he's talking about his word. Come eat on my word. Give your time and attention to my word and it, you will be satisfied. And come to me here so that your being lives. So you're going to live when you are nourished by the word. And let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthiness, uh, the trustworthy kindnesses of David. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, a nation you do not know, you shall call, and a nation who does not know you runs to you because of Hashem your Elohim and the set, up, set apart one of Israel, for he has adorned you. So that's going to be the unified nation. And it talks about one flock in um, one of the prophets that uh, it shall all be one people. It's all going to be one people. And when you look at Ezekiel, you have two sticks, Israel, uh, who later becomes uh, Manasseh, or Ephraim, sorry, uh, Israel who becomes Ephraim, and then you have Judah, they become one, but who is with them? The companions. There are others that are coming with them. So people will run to you because of Hashem, and that is a promise and a prophecy. Verse six, seek him while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Hashem who has compassion on him and to our Elohim for he pardons much. He is ready to pardon. That is abundantly. There is nothing that cannot be forgiven is what that means. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Hashem. So who is he talking to? The wicked man, the unrighteous man. Your thoughts are not your thoughts. Uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. O wicked man, O unrighteous man. Verse nine. For as the Shemaim are higher than the earth, so are my ways uh, than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain, water, Torah, drinking, eat, consume, time and attention, grow, live. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the Shemaim and do not return there, but the water, but they water the earth and make it bring forth bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I send it for. I love it. Water the earth, it brings forth bud. What does that mean? My word will not return to me empty, void, uh, vanity, useless. It's going to return to him prosperously, okay? So he's going to do what he said. But you know what's even greater than that? Hashem is working behind the scenes. I love it. Okay? Hashem is working behind the scenes. He is making moves that you don't even know about. You know what's awesome about this? We do not need to know everything he's doing. I love that. That's what he gave me this morning. You do not need to know everything he's doing. But just know he's working behind the scenes. And how can I get that from verse 58? You do not see everything that happens under the ground. But one day it will break forth and pop up through the earth. And then you're going to be able to see it. Something you said is growing. Something you did is growing. So you said something and you did something. So that was action and words. Your words matched up with what you were doing. So don't be discouraged. He's working behind the scenes. <laughs> Something's happening. You don't see everything that's happening under the ground, but you know what? That seed is growing. His word is not going to return to him void. You have to, you have, to have hope when it's hopeless. You have to have trust when it's hard to trust. You got to believe. I love it. Movements are being made. Pieces are coming together. I, uh, one of my favorite phrases is a song. Your life isn't falling apart. It's falling into place. Ezekiel 37, and we'll close out. Ezekiel 37 and verse 11, we talked about this last week. We're going to get into the very last part of it when he reveals the prophecy. Ezekiel 37 verse 11, and he said to me, son of man, these bones are the house of Israel. See, they say, our bones are dry. Our expect uh, expectancy has perished and we ourselves have been cut off. So they're just dried out. Where's the Torah? Where's their hope? Dried up. Therefore, Nabah, 
prophesied, and you shall say to them, Thus said the Master of Shem, See, O my people, I am opening your graves, and you shall bring you up from the graves, and shall bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Hashem, when I open your graves, O my people, and bring you up from your graves, and I shall put my Ruach in you, and you shall live, and I shall settle you in your land, and you shall know that I, Hashem, have spoken, and I have done it, declares Hashem. How do we know him? How do we know him? By his protection, provision, and presence. He is no one that can be seen, but you know that he is there. How many times, like we said, we'll say it again. Wow, that was a miracle. Somebody was watching over me. Who was it? It was Hashem. And they shall know me. In the end, everyone's going to bow. Everyone's going to swear. He is Hashem and there's no one beside him. No one is his equal. I like that he's hidden. <laughs> because if you ever played hide and seek, what do you got to do? You got to find him. You got to find him. He's hidden. So therefore, you've got to go on a search to find him. He has hidden his face. We know him by his name, his presence, provision, and protection. Everybody have a blessed Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom.